I can confidently say I've been in love twice in my life. The first was the first, and as with most firsts, it feels new and exciting. Something wholly different than the second time around. That's not to say my second bite wasn't either of those things, it was new and exciting, but that time it felt as if I had truly bloomed. Yet it was also suffocating. So when it ended, I caved in on myself shut out the light and blocked any chance of those rays getting through, I became an observer, wholly satisfied with watching others take shape and I thought, no, I knew I would always be satisfied with that. And then I watched Bloom Into You and within its 13 episodes it made me miss a feeling I thought I'd forgotten. This anime is a Yuri or a shoujo eye, and if you're versed in that genre then you'll know what that usually entails. I've personally been disappointed more often than not with anime of this ilk. Many times they're poorly adapted from the source material, or just don't depict love in a healthy way. Now this doesn't always matter, as every story has its own way of telling a story, but as someone who loves a love story, I've always wanted better, <laughs> and it's never mattered to me who stood in those roles. I just appreciate love for what it is, and in all its forms. But for this genre, and this fandom who often have to settle with subtle hints and blatant references plastered and scattered across other anime, it becomes more than refreshing to find a show that is honest with what it is, that kicks tropes to the curb and doesn't try to pander to fan service. That is nothing more than a story about falling in love. And almost immediately, I felt myself fall into you. From the offset, she is drowning, drifting further and further away from her friends who all seem to understand an emotion she has never been able to grasp. Love. In fact, she's never even had a crush, lost in the pages of her shoujo manga, believing love has to look like this. So she begins to sink deeper and deeper into the abyss, watching others float along the surface, until she meets Toko Nanami. So, I'm Nanami Toko. And she gradually drags her head above water, but it takes a long time before that happens. Because you is filled with resistance, pushing back against the current, constantly in battle with the waves, confused but contented to stay the way she is, utterly devoid of loving. And I, in that respect, am everything that is you. In the last few years, I've rejected adamantly any notion of romantic love, become stiff to affection and cringe at the idea of desire and it's just so sad if you think about it because I'm also everything I've said before, a lover of a love story, so why can't I imagine it for me? Why do I freeze up like you and why am I happy to observe from the outside like Maki and why do I hide behind a mask like Toko? Why can I bloom? answer to that developed as Yuki Hanada and Makoto Kato developed their narrative in Bloom Into You, and through the weeks they began to weave a new narrative in me, separately and all together with you. Now that being said, it was a journey to get here, for both of us. Bloom Into You is not your typical romance, there are countless missteps between the characters and it has its own share of drama. But as they say, it's the journey, not the destination that matters. 
And if you've loved before, you'll know the path isn't laden in gold. It's a marred mishmash of scrapes and taints that will have you taking leaps, not steps, to reach that destination. And when you do, it's all the sweeter. I'd forgotten that. And as you closed the gap between her and Toko, I realised how big my own was. That I had enjoyed every romance anime I watched this year. That after the rain is a gorgeous peek into unrequited love and its consequences. That I don't think there is a studio who could have told the story of love in all its forms better than Kyoani with Violet Evergarden. I had bounds of fun in the teenage world of boarding school Juliet and in the adult one of Otakoi. Sakata and I still stand the ship of the year, and yes, I guess I found Citrus to be heartwarming in its own way, but none of them helped me close that gap like Bloom into You. They were all beautiful shows, some tens out of tens, some masterpieces, some will never leave my mind, but none of them, none of them left that cold pang in my chest like this anime did. was growing and growing each and every week as vulnerability was shown, as feelings began to develop, as they kissed in the store cupboard, as Sayaka confessed in the cafe, as the play was performed on stage, as you held Toko in bed, I realised that it was an emptiness that consumed me, that I missed this, that I missed love, I missed the feeling of falling in love, that it can be soft and sweet, that it can come up accidentally or unknowingly, that it is as unprecedented as it is beautiful, that I have allowed myself to be wrapped up in my own fear of giving up my own heart. Because it's scary, don't you think? Putting a part of your happiness into someone else's hands. It's so much easier and rather safer reading about it like you did and that I do. Any heartbreak can be buried within the pages, shared, but it's not my own and, and I can put that book away and pick up another and I'm free to choose for myself single in my own independence. It's no exaggeration to say that I'm terrified of giving that up. But... It's no exaggeration to say that anime has taught me the right person will make it feel like moving forward instead. That like you, maybe it's worth experiencing from the inside rather than out. I... I don't know if I'm ready for that. Yet. But I do feel closer to the surface than I was 13 weeks ago. And now that it's over, I'll be continuing you, Toko and Sayaka's story in the manga. And maybe by the end of its serialisation, maybe if we get a second season, I'll be ready to crack the surface. To conclude with my little thought piece, I've realised that this anime is not just a tale about falling in love, but it's about accepting oneself, coming to terms with forbidden feelings, realising who you are, and that there is love to be found beyond the pages of a shoujo manga. And most importantly, that no matter how long it takes, and no matter who it's with, it may just be possible to bloom into you.